How you doing, guys? So, um, today is going to be, I'm going to be talking about two uh, different topics. As you can see right up here, I'm going to be talking about the book of Hebrews was not written to Paul. And then I'll be going over my personal testimony of how I even came to write division. Um, and I'll start off with the, um, the testimony first. So, um, last year around, I believe March, um, my, my friend, um, came up here uh, to where I stay in Greensboro. We were discussing, uh, you know, topics in the Bible. We were actually our first time trying to realize a lot of these things that, um, uh, we had learned from uh, various places, uh, our families, uh, you know, just trying to come to some understanding and trying to rationalize and, philo you know, just different things, almost philosophy almost. Um, and we had, I had showed my friend a verse in the Bible that was talking about if you add to or take away from God's word, uh, that's in Revelations and the uh, what will happen to you. And he had asked me, a question about that. He's like, well, whoa, wouldn't, doesn't that mean we're all guilty of that? And I was like, wow, like, I never thought about that. You know, I was like, I'm gonna get back at you on that one. I was like, I'm gonna look this up. And I Googled it. And for the first time that really stuck out to me. I said, well, I, I know I'm certainly guilty of this. I know I've certainly added to or taken away from God's word. And at the time, I didn't understand that the verse was pertaining specifically to revelations. But in my brain, I was thinking, well, that means that just the entire Bible, you know, if you add to or take away from God's word in any way, whether it be you writing in the Bible, uh, whether it be you be misquoting a verse, you could be guilty of adding to or taking away from God's word. So that prompted me to really, for the next couple of days, I was searching for an answer to this question. I said, for whatever reason, I had realized the plain um, way that was spelled out, like there was no way around that, we would all be guilty of that today. Literally, we would all be guilty of that. How can you escape that? For whatever reason, I guess I never, never really thought about other things in the Bible, but that really stuck out to me of how plain and simple that said, and I was like, and how guilty of it I was. So I was um, looking for sermons online that spoke about this, and I, I ran into a couple sermons and, you know, kind of gravitated towards those, but still didn't really make any sense because I kept saying, well, we're humans, you know, we're, everybody would be guilty of this. And you know, I was like, there should be plagues and everything. I was trying to figure out, you know, and just logically understand what is happening. So it wasn't until I typed in on YouTube, that's that question. Uh, uh, I typed in the verse, whatever verse it was in Revelation is talking about that, adding to or taking away from um, from the book of Revelations. And I ran into Truth Time Radio, my first video I ever watched. And it was Trey Searcy speaking on how that in Revelations is not pertaining to you. And I was like, how can he say this? Of course this is pertaining to me. Everything in the Bible is pertaining to me. That was my mindset. And I kept watching the video, and the way he explained it was he was explaining right division, how to rightly divide and understand that the book of Revelations is not for you. And that's what started my journey into right division. Uh, you know, that's when I actually started to go and use the Bible and check the things that I'm talking about uh, to make sure they're correct. It, it was amazing. Um, I had never before in my life. Oh, hold on, guys. All right. I had never before in my life really questioned the things in the Bible. That was my first time I really questioned. And um, that's when I when I came to write division, when I was explaining, someone told me about, uh, well, Trey Searcy told me about 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 on one of his um, videos. And I looked at it, went in my... Luckily, I had a KJV Bible, luckily. <laughs> I went to it, and, um, you know, I looked at it, and I was like, wow. I, I, I see what he's saying, like, rightly divide. I was like, I've never been told that word before in my entire life. No one's ever told me about that. 
You know, I was just thinking, I was like, mom and dad never told me about this. My grandparents never told me about this. What's right division? And that's how I got the ball rolling. And after understanding right division, dispensations, uh, who Paul spoke to, who he actually was t talking to, what are the roles of an apostle, uh, what were the roles of the disciples, getting all these questions answered, I finally got, I finally was like, wow, this is common sense. Like this, this makes logical sense. And ever since then, I stuck with it ever since. And you're able to find out where you're at, where you're positioned in the Bible. Not everything in the Bible is for you. It's all for your learning, but it's not specifically to you. Whether you, you know, whatever today, Jew or Gentile, not everything in there is talking to you. And what's so ironic about that is we all are, we all rightly divide automatically. We just don't think about it because most people today, I say most because you got some psychos out there are not killing a lamb, you know, and, and, and slaughtering it on the altar to God. So you automatically rightly divide. You know that's not what you're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's just the fact that we haven't dug deeper. That's all. That's all. We've these people at these churches are keeping us on on the surface, on the surface thing. They're not diving deep into anything because they don't understand it. They're only going to talk about things that they think make sense to them. Again, most of the world agrees that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins. Some of the world doesn't believe he's God, but a lot of the world actually believes Jesus Christ is God. They understand that. It's just the rest of the things they don't understand. So um, today, that was just my testimony, and I, I wanted to explain that, what brought me to right division. Everybody has a different testimony of what brought them to right division, but that was mine. So... Today we're going to be talking about discussing the book of Hebrews. This is another thing I want to give credit to uh, Trey Searcy. If you go to Truth Time Radio, he explains this uh, a lot more detail than I had uh, than I do. But today I just want to explain pretty much sum it all up um, because some of you may not go to his channel. Maybe you're only watching my channel. I, I have a lot of my family members. That I actually subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel, so they'll only see it from my YouTube channel. But so I just want to give him credit because I, <laughs> I had to learn this step at a time from watching his videos and, and checking with the Bible. The Book of Hebrews was not written by Paul, and the reason why this is so important because I've been stressing right division. When you read the Book of Hebrews, there are many topics in Hebrews that go completely against Paul. People want to say Paul wrote the book of Hebrews, but if he wrote the book of Hebrews, then it makes no sense. In Hebrews, it talks about you can lose your salvation. In Hebrews, it talks about doing commandments, doing law. So in Hebrews, it talks about a new covenant, a new, test, uh, a new testament. Paul never discussed us ever having the new covenant, us as being in the body of Christ. The new covenant is for us. He never discussed that the New Testament was for the body of Christ. He never said anything about that. Uh, he may have been talking about Jews who will receive the New Covenant, New Testament, but it was he never referred to we in the body of Christ are under the New Covenant and will be under the New, uh, new Testament. Because this is where people will confuse. That's why you have churches that are calling themselves New Covenant you know, Baptist church or whatever, thinking that they're under the new covenant. And they may even be Pauline. They may be listening to Paul, but they're confused. They don't understand. The New Testament is dealing with law. New covenant is dealing with a promise from God to his chosen um, nation of people. It's not dealing with us. So that's what we have to um, understand today. A, a lot of stuff is... It, it, all of it is not for us. You can only go to Paul for your, for him being your apostle, the gospel that saves you, uh, which is, again, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You believe that, you're saved. Now, when I say believe that, understand that he died for your sins, literally. 
Now, in dying for your sins, what happened? He shed his blood on the cross, which took away. Um, I mean, forget. Sorry, let me let me uh, backpedal a little bit. When he shed his blood on the cross, he forgave your sins. When he literally died for your sins, he took the wages of death. For the wages of uh, for the wages of sin is death. So you were supposed to die. He in your place died instead of you. Um, then because he shed his blood on the cross, he that he God was able to reconcile, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Doing that, he was able to, because he paid for all the sins on the cross through his own shed blood, because he forgave all sins. Now God is saying, I mean, if you go to the verse, I can't remember the chapter and verse right now. But what he's explicitly doing is not counting sin because he reconciled himself to the world. He was able to not impute sin, not not impute trespasses to us anymore. He's not counting sin to our account. Then what was the next thing that happened? Of course, he was buried. Then he rose again, resurrected in a glorified body, not in the same body that contains sin. A completely transformed body that did not have our sins attached to it. He resurrected in that body on the third day. And then he um, you know, he stayed with them a certain amount of days, I can't remember, and then ascended up to glory. That is the gospel. Ephesians uh, chapter 1 verse 13 explains you the process. You hear the word of truth. You trust it. You believe it. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. That's it. You, you have eternal life. You have an inheritance. You can't lose your salvation. But again, in Hebrews, it does explain you can lose your, your, your salvation. This is why you cannot get Hebrews confused with Paul. These are two separate things. Hebrews is, guess what? For Hebrews, Paul was speaking to Romans, Gentiles. So that's what I'll be discussing today. So, um... Again, I, I in the future I will be doing. I've already done a detailed video on the gospel, but I'll do the gospel on the whiteboard so I can just write it out what the gospel is. But if you believe what I've said to you, all your sins were taken care of by Jesus Christ on the cross. They were taken to the grave. They're they're gone. They're that's it. It's no more sin anymore. So you just trust what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you. You are saved. You trust, okay, because of what he, he's done on the cross, and I really trust and believe what he did on the cross, completely what he did. I'm not praying to God to forgive me of my sins. I'm not believing the gospel so he will then forgive me of my sins. No, I'm believing that he dealt with all my sins at the cross. You trust that, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. You are saved. You cannot die. You cannot go to hell. If you go to hell, then God is a liar. Can't go to hell, guys. You're saved. That's it. So let's get back to this real quick. Um, so first, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, 21. Because I want to lay down some groundwork on what is the salutation of Paul. This is very important because this is actual evidence that these books were written by Paul. All right, so 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Verse 21, all right. The salutation of me, Paul, with mine own hand. So what does that mean, mine own hand? He's, he's literally telling you, by his own hand, he wrote this. All right. So that's one evidence. Let's go to Colossians chapter 4, verse 18. Colossians chapter 4, verse 18. The 
salutation by the hand of me. There we go. The hand of me, Paul. Remember my bonds. Grace be with you. Amen. Another verse saying the same thing as that. It's by his own hand. All right, let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. And I understand that some of you may have a KJV Bible that says Hebrews is the, uh, it, it'll say the epistle of Paul to the Hebrews. And the reason I'm showing you these verses is because they completely go against that concept. And that is literally an error in your Bible. Am I saying God made a mistake? No. But the publishers of this KJV Bible, not, not specifically this one, but of some KJV Bibles did make a mistake. They decided to say Hebrews was written by Paul, not God. They decided to override what the original Bible said, which never the author was never named for Hebrews. They decide, well, this is an error we believe, so let's go ahead and correct this and say this is the epistle of Paul, which messes up everything. It, it, it doesn't create a distinction anymore. If Hebrews was written by Paul, then there is no distinction then there means we should be doing everything that is in Hebrews. But it doesn't make any sense if we understand that Paul is the only one that is the apostle to the Gentiles, no one else. She so said it confuses you, it doesn't make any sense. All right, so 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. Oh, sorry, not, not verse 1. I made a mistake. Verse 17. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 17. And watch this. This is even further evidence. The salutation of Paul with mine own hand, which is the token in every epistle. Every epistle. So I write. So he's saying in every one of his epistles, and he's writing them. Now, if you go to Hebrews, and you can do a word search on Hebrews, even as you read Hebrews, if you read through all of it, there's never one time does it say who actually wrote this. There's never a description of the person writing. It's, it's almost like the it's written in third person. It's talking about everyone else, but it's never once saying I, I, I. It never says that. First Hebrews 1. God who has sundry times in a diverse manner spake in time past to the fathers by the prophets. Had in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. It's There's nothing in here that is giving you any indication that this was written by Paul. We don't, we don't know who's, who wrote it. That's the truth. We don't know who wrote it. Some people think God wrote Hebrews. Um, I don't know who wrote Hebrews. The, the, the writer is unknown. And apparently it doesn't matter. But whoever wrote Hebrews did not want you to know who they were. They did not want you to know who they were because they did not give indications on who they are. But it's funny to me, and every, not really funny, but you get what I'm saying, interesting, and in all of Paul's books, he gives you indication that he wrote it all the time. He wrote it. He wrote it. Why would Paul in Hebrews want to keep himself a mystery? And some people really have theories and try to say, oh, I understand, you know, for whatever reason, they try to Make Paul out to be the one who wrote Hebrews when he said, we just, I just showed you in 2 Thessalonians, he writes every epistle that, that, you know, that he writes by his own hand. It's, it's, he'll, he'll have a salutation in every epistle that he writes. So um, that's, that's it, guys. I, I really can't get any more deeper than that on the subject. That's pretty much it. That's all I see. I just take the Bible's what it says. Paul did not write Hebrews. Um, read through Hebrews. It's a lot of things that go completely against Paul. Um, I'll be making a video in the future as well on 
actually probably exposing some people. I have. It's been a while since I've exposed some of these false pastors. I, the last one I did, I talked about Anderson a little bit. Uh, my friend Bobby Faulkner here on YouTube, that, that's mainly what he does. He teaches, but he exposes many, many frauds, and um, he takes care of that. Him and uh, Tony Holder, those, those two channels are really good. But uh, on my channel, I'll try to do a little bit more teaching, but I'm probably going to start doing some exposing because there's a person online uh, named, uh, what is her name? It's Renee, I can't remember her last name. Renee something, I can't remember her last name. And on her channel, she claims to Riley Divine and she does not. She blends Hebrews. She thinks Paul wrote Hebrews and she thinks Hebrews is talking about eternal salvation and you can't lose it. Now, whether or not, if it's really talking about eternal salvation, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, the books that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John talked about eternal salvation. But all of those books also contain, except for Paul's, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those books contain losing salvation. Um, Hebrews contains losing salvation, but she defends very vehemently that you cannot lose your salvation. Ever. And I was like, wow. This is, wow. I, I had a discussion with her on one of her uh, channels. Um, had people in there just kind of mocking um it's kind of, it's really sad. They were talking about lost people and, you know, calling certain people heretics that believe that you can lose your salvation, which, yes, in Paul's books, for us today, you can't lose your salvation, but in other books, you can lose salvation. I don't, they were talking about Gene Kim, Robert Breaker. I do not fully agree with Robert Breaker and Gene Kim. I do not even believe they're saved. They do not even believe the gospel. But they are correct when they rightly divide as far as who can lose their salvation, who cannot. They believe in Paul's books that when you believe the gospel, you can't lose, lose salvation. They just don't know the gospel. She's saying you can never lose your uh, salvation in any book in the Bible. And I was like, wow, how do you get to this delusional status? Because you can clearly lose your salvation in certain books of the Bible. That's why those books aren't written to you. And anyone with a brain can really see Paul is completely against those apostles. Not against him like he's fighting with them, but it just what he is saying is, is contrary to what they're what they're talking about. And I've, I've explained that on other books already. Um, I mean, other videos that, I, that I've made. So I'm definitely going to be exposing her. Um, she doesn't believe the gospel either, uh, which is so weird to me. She put a video out the other day talking about all sin has been forgiven. But if you go talk to her, she doesn't believe all sins have been forgiven. Like, how, how can you even be that deluded to say all sin has been forgiven? Okay, do you believe blasting the Holy Ghost is forgiven? No. Then you don't believe all sin has been forgiven. And what she says is, well, God said he'll never forgive this. And I was like, yes, he did. Under the covenant. Back. Under the covenant and what the Jews were in, he wouldn't forget that sin. Are we under a covenant today? Why does he say haven't forgiven all trespasses? I showed her that. I was like, he doesn't mention blasphemy of the Holy Ghost there. Just uses the word all. All trespasses. Obviously, blasphemy of the Holy Ghost will be included in that. If he wanted to create a distinction, make an exception like he did back here, he would say again, I've forgiven all sins except blasphemy the Holy Ghost. He would have mentioned that. So I'm just trying to give you guys examples of how someone, they can say they believe all sins have been forgiven, but don't really believe all sins have been forgiven, which they have not believed the gospel. They are not saved. You have to believe all your sins were forgiven by the shed blood of Jesus Christ at the cross. If you don't believe that, you're not saved. That's all it comes down to. And, um, I said, no, guys, I'll, I'll definitely be making a exposing her. Um, and I don't care that she, you know, is is saying that she, she this person, I believe, I personally believe the devil will use someone like her. And there's many pastors out there that the devil uses. 
of false ministers or whatever, but she will be particularly used in the tribulation. People will say in the tribulation, I really believe this, that it's, it's grace through faith. And if you take the mark of the beast, it's fine. You can't lose your salvation. Because that is what she's preaching. She's preaching grace through faith in tribulation time period. An angel's going to fly over in tribulation and talk about doing the command, fear of God and give him glory, telling you to do something. She's saying, you ain't got to do nothing. It's grace through faith there too. Like, the devil's literally using her. <laughs> like, so many people are going to say, I can't lose my salvation. I'll take the mark of the beast. Go ahead, give it to me. I, I can't lose my salvation. Sad, man. They're not rightly divided. But on the opposite side, some people that, like I said, that agree with what I just said, that statement, they apply it to Paul. They'll say, yeah. So in Paul, you better do the commandments. Better do commandments. And like, what commandments? They were... Those ordinances were nailed to the cross. What, what are we supposed to do? Uh, just do them anyway. <laughs> so you get two extremes. You know what I'm saying? That's why we rightly divide. And this makes sense. So, all right, though, guys. Have a great day.